For this tutorial, we're going to create a retro logo using just the horizontal text tool and the shape tool. So we're looking to create this logo in this tutorial. So why don't we get started? Go into Photoshop, create a new project. Uh, let's use a large project. Let's use a thousand by a thousand pixels. We'll start off that way. Go to your toolbar and select the rounded rectangle tool and then draw a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, fairly large, in the center of your project. Okay. Uh, once you've created your, your rectangle, rounded rectangle, go up and fill it with a color and you can move it into place in the center of the screen. Next thing we want to do is we want to alter the shape of this rounded rectangle. We basically want to take the top portion and push it up and the bottom portion and push it down just to give it more of kind of like a diamond shape. And we're going to use the pen tool to do that. So go back to your toolbar, select your your pen tool to add an anchor point and we're going to add an anchor point right in the center of the top line and then we're going to drag it up slightly and once we've, we've done that we're going to take the anchor points and move them back into the center so we can straighten out the line so we don't have a curve if you notice there that there was a curve and now we're just going to take that curve away and make it straight do the same thing on the bottom. Pen tool could sometimes be a little tough to manipulate. So I just made myself an anchor point. I'm going to drag that out. Same thing as I did above. I'm just going to drag the points back in the center and make it look like a straight line rather than a curve. Okay, so this is what we're going to start out with. And um, what we want to do next is we what we what we want is to have some borders around this this base layer red then white then red then white again so to do that we have to contract the uh, the border that we have now and just keep on contracting and adding uh, red and white coloring to it and I'll show you how that works so I have the the rounded rectangle layer selected I'm going to select have a selection made on that on that layer and you have to go up to the select menu click modify and then contract and I want to contract it 10 pixels so I'll hit OK and so if you notice it contracted 10 pixels around and what we want to do is we want to erase the center part so it'll become white so that we can have uh, a red border then some white so the, the the best way to do that is just to, just to hit delete. But if you notice, when we hit delete, we get this error message. And the reason why we're getting this error message is because when you create a, sh a, create a layer from a shape, it's a vector image, which means you can't really alter it. So you have to change it to pixels. And the way to do that is to rasterize the layer. To do that, you right mouse click on the layer in the layer panel and just select rasterize layer. Now it's just a matter of hitting delete and now the red goes away. So now we have red and white. Now we want to make the white the border. So let's continue the same process that we did earlier. Go to selection, hit modify, contract. We'll do 10 again and if you notice you see now we have a white border. So this time instead of deleting we have to add a color so what I'm going to do is go up to the edit menu, hit fill, and then fill with a color. And that color is going to be the red that we have in the current border. So I'm just going to select that with the eyedropper tool, hit OK, hit OK, and now the red is filled in, and now we have a white border. So let's do it again. We want to do another red layer, then another white layer. So again, we're going to hit select, modify, and we're going to contract. This time we're going to contract 20 pixels and we're going to hit delete and the last time we have to do this we're going to hit select again we're going to modify contract go back to 10 pixels hit OK and then we're just going to fill in 
the the major portion of the screen with with that same red so I'll do edit fill select my color again I'm going to select the red hit, hit OK and then select deselect and now you can see here's what the base layer looks like so the next step is we want to add some text to this so we're going to put a company name uh, an established date and a, and a city and then a couple of, of horizontal lines just to give it a little bit more more um, depth so let's go to our horizontal type tool type in a company name I'm going to select 72 pixels for now I'm just going to call it company logo and I'm going to move it into the center of the base layer now that looks a little too small so why don't we why don't we adjust that size a bit bring it up to about 88 looks good and uh, I'll just make sure it's centered so there's company logo next thing we want to do is create something for the top and something for the bottom underneath the logo so I'm just going to duplicate the layer company logo I'm going to click and drag it in the layers panel to the new layers icon so now I have two two of the same layer uh, that say company logo but we're going to change that I'm going to just move it up move it up to the top and I'm going to edit that to say established 2017 and I'm going to just lower the size of the of the text a little bit. In fact, I'm going to, going to actually move it down just a little bit. So I have established 2017, the company logo. Now on the bottom, I want to take a duplicate of this layer we just created and move that to the bottom of the of the project here and we're going to change that to be a city so establish 2017 company logo and now we're going to make it uh, look like we have a city here so let's go back into our type tool and change it in this case we're going to use Reading Pennsylvania and that looks pretty good last step we're going to do is put two horizontal lines one one above company logo one below company logo so go back into your shape tool select the line tool uh, click in between uh, the company logo and Reading Pennsylvania click and hold and drag with your shift key depressed and just and that'll make a straight line once you have your line you can change your color to white and we can change the height of the of the line but we before we do that we need to rasterize this shape so let's go back to the layers panel hit rasterize layer once we have that selected we can change the the height and we'll make it like six pixels once we have that line we want to duplicate this and put the line above the company logo so just click and drag the layer we just created with the shape drag it down in the layers panel create another another uh, line layer and just drag that to the top above company logo so once you've done that you've pretty much taken care of our lines and our uh, horizontal text tool go down to the bottom and just shut off the background layer and I just want to show you this so now we have transparency on the on the base layer and in the background except for where we have the lines and the horizontal text tool so what we want to do is we want to we want to make them also transparent the way you do that is you have to select all of the layers and the way you do that is you hold down the control and shift key 
and click on each layer and if you notice they're all highlighted with the marching ants so once everything's highlighted you can shut each one of the layers off and if you notice you still retain the selection and what you want to do is go down to the rectangle layer click on that and then it's just a matter of hitting delete once you hit delete now now you've gotten rid of the uh, the selection that was on top of the rounded rectangle and now you, now everything should be transparent so I'll hit deselect to show you that so the last step is to put a background behind the logo and maybe do some blending options with the actual logo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, insert a background layer and here's the layer that that I've chosen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this layer so I'm just going to drag it up hit edit I'm going to hit transform I'm going to scale I'm going to just make it the whole size of our project and since it's uh, above our rounded rectangle layer I'm just going to swap them I'm going to move the rounded rectangle layer above above the background layer and now you can see that, it, that it's showing through. Um, last thing we want to do is, is just play around a bit with the with the blending option so I'm going to double click on the rounded rectangle layer and uh, select a couple of op options. First thing I'm going to do is get go into bevel and emboss and I'm going to to change some of those options so I'm going to change emboss to inner bevel and you can see now it's like kind of raised up over the over the background layer uh, I'm going to set the depth a little bit bigger maybe somewhere in the 400 range not 400 percent range and then the size I'll just give it a one and, it, and once I hit that one you can notice how everything kind of popped out over there um, the other thing you can, we can do is play around with some of the gradients and I'm going to go into my gradient level and I'm going to select let's let's say we'll select overlay and you know you can you can select any of these gradients that you want to use in fact let's just go back to normal that looked okay so we, we can go back to to um, normal I'm just going to take the opacity down so you can see a little bit of uh, color change for, from the gradient we can leave it like that and then lastly if we wanted to we can actually add a pattern in behind it and I'm going to I'm just gonna put a little bit of a pattern behind there just to give it a little bit of a different kind of metallic look okay so so there is the logo and again, let's let's just review what we did here. So we created um, we created all of these images in the back, as far as the background, using the shape tool. We used the rounded rectangle tool. We used the pen tool to give it these little points on the top and the bottom. We have a line tool in the center, and we use the type tool. We made everything transparent so we can see the background layer. Okay, so um, obviously you, you, there, there's a lot of possibilities here. So um, this is just one way of, of uh, creating a retro logo. And I hope you learned something here today. And if you have any questions, just leave them for me below. Thank you.